You're listening to Ask When, the podcast. Folks from all walks of life talk about their daily hustle and bustle, living and celebrating life, sharing tips on becoming champions, especially for those who are muscling, mental, and physical disabilities. Ask When, the podcast with your host, who has mustered over 30 years living with cerebral palsy and going strong, author and cerebral palsy advocate, Wynn Charles. Ask when the podcast starts right now. Welcome to Ask When, everyone. This morning with me, I have Dr. Kill, and she is going to explain to you guys more about what she does. And first of all, congratulations to her for her children's book hitting number one as of today, you guys. So she's going to explain more about that. And we're just going to have a natural conversation. But welcome at Dr. Carol. And I'm going to let you take it away and explain to my fan base more about what you do. Sure. Well, uh, as of today, um, we're a number one bestseller. And I wrote The Surprise Circus with my six-year-old granddaughter. And and the illustrator was is 15, and that shows you as the story that children can do anything once they believe in themselves and once they're hungry. And that's the message that's in this book, The Surprise Circus. It's about what happens when a little girl believes in herself and then realizes she can do anything, even something as magical as the circus. And this book was, uh, I started writing it. I'm sure you've heard of Les Brown, the mo- the amazing motivational speaker. I have. Well, he and I were talking, and we decided to take his message to children. Uh, his message of believing in yourself, his message of being hungry for success. He wrote the forward of the book, which you would think he wrote it today or yesterday, rather, because he it says that children have to be told what they can do, not what they can't do. And today, where every other word out of parents' mouths, rightly so, is You can't do this, don't do that. You can't even go out and play. This book shows them what they can do no matter what. So it's it's really timely, especially in this time of negativity. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree. It's timely. And now what is your age bracket? of this book? Is it young kids? Is it uh, kids that just want to believe in themselves? Is it towards the older kids? That's really funny. I knew that was going to be your next question. <laughs> and it, it is. it was written for children ages three to eight. And we kind of tested it on little, even, even a two-year-old, and she was giggling from the bright colors and the the amazing drawings but my 10 year old grandson by the way i have 12 grandchildren my 10 year old grandson said he read it and he said i'm laughing and if i'm laughing you know being such an old child it then children will really find it funny so i i've been beta testing it and with first grade teachers, kindergarten teachers, and it's so, but the basic age range, I would say, is three to eight. Okay. Would really, it would really um, grab them, tickle them, and I think, you know, eight on, they, I'm, I'm not going to say need stories with more meat, but they need 
um, more information, not just, and I say just, but imagination, but also in information. And this book um, gives, it, it works the imagination as well as the um, sense of humor more than than really informational. Does that okay. make sense? So it works the imagination more than um, informational, and it talks about believing in yourself, what you can do, not what you can't do. And I well, it, the little girl decides she wants to have a circus, or you no, know, decides the circus didn't come to town. What's she gonna do? So every week, the circus. Ringmaster sends her a box. Like one week, it's the um, trapeze artist who flies all around the room, so she has to put her in the backyard. And then another week, um, he sends the juggler, and the juggler starts throwing things up in the air, even her baby sister. So it just talks about the um, funny things that can happen when the circus you know, when you get, when you see each circus, and each circus um, character does funny, mischievous things in her house. I love it. I love it. And and then she decides oh, to be the ringmaster. Ah, she just, of course she does. She decides to be the ringmaster. Well, um, I love the concept of the book, and I think kids nowadays, especially the in the position with Sabina now, need more hope, need more love, need more everything. So, yes. That's my only two cents on that, coming out of a retired educator's mouth. Yes. We need more <laughs> and love, they need we need stories. more hope. Yes! And they need stories. Let's just say it. They need papers. They need books to read. Not so much digital books are wonderful, but they need book, paperback books to read. And I have, I am looking at all my children's books right now on my bookshelf as we record this, guys. And I grew up in the 90s. I, um, one of the things about me, even though I can't read, I can't physically hold a book to, um, read it due to my neurological disability, aka cerebral palsy. I a love of reading was always instilled in me. And yes, when I get downtime, I like to read a book. And I do it digitally. I do it via audio. So yes, I am a huge reader when I have time. And and that's what I was doing also. I was reading. I've I've posted it on quite on my channel where I read the book aloud to children because I think that's so important. I think it's so important too. I mean, we can go backwards and forwards about the fundamentals of reading a book and doing all that. And so, Dr. Carol, if you had to move and only take five things with you. What would they be? Uh, if, I had to, if I had to say that again, if I had to read? If you had to take five things with you, what would they be? Oh, that's easy because my husband and I went <clears throat> on an RV trip across the country to promote uh, my book, and we were in a tiny, tiny space, and oh, I filled it up with books. books. Uh, I was an English you teacher. Would take book. <laughs> you would what take else? books. You would take books, and I knew you would say books because you were not <laughs> almost also. And so, if your best friend had to write a book about you, what would the title be? The title would be the same title as what I go across the country 
speaking or went across the country speaking to women's groups about, and that would be unshakable drive. I am totally driven. I mean, we have four, we, this poor, my poor granddaughter, she's six now. And we have four more books in the hopper. She's, she's going to be overworked. <laughs> All the walks by a grandmother, I love it. <laughs> um, give us these kids a project now. Yeah. And that's, um, that's what you um, should do, you guys. You should actually, families should write a book together with their kids. I mean, it doesn't have to be published by any means, but let's start writing books with kids to leave a legacy, number one, and to teach them how to write a book. Oh, that's brilliant. That's, that's so, a brilliant yeah. message yeah. for today. Now, downtime, you guys, get out that laptop Get out that pen and paper and um, figure out who's going to be a co-author. I don't care if they're young. The co-authors can be young and brilliant knowledge. Have these kids start writing books. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be a science book. It can just be a story from the art. And the, their imaginations are amazing like i had you know what if the clown comes you know what if the clown comes and she just took it he'd hunk the horn and wake my baby i mean it is amazing what their imaginations can where their imaginations can go and so um your book title wouldn't be unstoppable drive and then what is it your favorite book title? What is it your favorite book and what is the title? My favorite book of all time. The book I remember the most. I'm trying to think. Oh gosh, there are so many. That's a hard question because I read so much. But I have to say, um, I have to say the book that sticks in my mind the most for some unknown reason, it is probably the red tent because she took, uh, I think it's Anne, Anne Lamont, Anne Diamante or something, but she took a, the Bible story and made it into a novel. And I, I just think that that's so clever when you can take something that we made it into a contemporary novel. So that's really what what impresses me the most. When and and to answer your question, for me it's not books so much as it is authors that I follow. You know, like uh, like let's say Joyce Carol Oates or but those or Ayn Rand. Those are how I pick my books by the author, and I kind of get to know the authors, and 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 that's. How I fall in love. Like I've read everything that um, Leanne Moriarty, who wrote Big Little Lies, I've read everything by her. So that's my. And then I started doing Dr. Seuss, of course, for my children's book. But my granddaughter wasn't a fan when I was, you know, some of. See, he a lot of his books have morals, which many children's books don't, and that's why we wrote this book have a moral in addition to a fantasy and fabulous story and colors and and I I think that's so important for children to have a book like the surprise circus that has a moral that has something they can walk away from and talk about and so can you give us your morning routine my morning routine hmm well, I I wake up and I have some quiet time and plan my day. And then my now we're we're in a new normal or whatever I call it the new abnormal. And 
people, you know, I, as a qualified medical examiner, would go out and examine the patient and write the reports. Well, now I'm not doing that. So my day is totally uh, upside down. I mean, it's it, it's like my schedule is all off. I'm not running out to the office anymore. And so what I basically do is plan out my day, and then I do, I'm, I'm still president of an organization, IAW, International Association of Women, our chapter. So we're taking it virtually now so that we can give people connections. And I've I've been spending my past week, you know, trying to alert everybody about the book and telling them, you know, look for it, consider buying the Kindle, buying the regular version, <clears throat> because I want to get it to as many hands as possible. So my day is really now spent marketing the book so that it can get into children's hands, whether that means donating or or physically, well, I can't say physically giving, physically dropping off on a doorstep, um, because I want I want children to be able to escape in a story for a little while. Yeah. And next week we're gonna start on book two. Ay, 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 ay. So <laughs> okay, book one, book two, and then you're going to have to come back to me after book two is published because yeah, I'm always a big fan of children's literacy, and I always want to um, support the children's book courses. I truly do. And so, do you have any questions for me as we wrap this interview up? Oh, absolutely. What I want to know about your teaching career and what the one lesson you took away from that teaching career. Well, I'm still trying to figure that out because, as I said, I got laid off and I was supposed to quit my job. I had a plan to quit my job in May, not March, May, but I uh, got laid off due to everything that's going on. So my um, greatest lesson out of a retired educator is how much I impacted those kids. And I impacted the adults around me. And yes, the adults are still listening to this podcast. I know they are. And so how much you can impact a kid and inspiring them to believe believe in what they can do versus what they can't do. Oh, that's exact. You you took that from my book. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah. And so um, my biggest joy, and um, it makes me sad when I think about it, and it's going to make me cry now because <laughs> I didn't get to say goodbye to oh. my or my school um, when I emailed them they had no clue what was going on because now granted the journalist in me, the citizen journalist the almost accredited journalist in me was falling every which way all across the country seeing what the schools were doing contacting the other teacher on the planet and who I knew and figuring it out for myself, secretly figuring it out, out for myself, unbeknownst to the retired educators and unbeknownst to everyone else. So I said to them, I said to um, my previous school, I said, the school where I used to teach, Aspen Country Day, I said, well, do you want me to come back on April 15th or what are we doing? And mm. my response from them back to me was, we don't have a plan yet. We are on the spring break, but we agree 
that social isolate social distancing and social isolation is the best thing for you right and i'm like bye guys because bye <laughs> you, oh. i said bye guys because you i understand that schools had a hard time putting a plan in place i understand that i get that but right it's like okay when something hits the wall and i'm not using the common language you guys are thinking when something right. hits the wall um, you have to start making a game plan now and so a lot of these educators and a lot of these school districts I know up in Washington, they're, um, they're closed for the rest of the school year because when something hits the wall, a lot of these educators didn't have a plan put in place. And when my ex school didn't have a plan put in place, so therefore they lost an uh, educator. Well, I don't, I think so many of us didn't have a plan in place for this. Well, no, we didn't have a plan in place in, for this, but I knew what, I knew what I was coming home to. I actually felt a shift in my own body back in, back in July when I was asked a question and the answer was no, because I um, was asked this question and off mic by my stepmom and my aide at the time. And I said, no. And they thought, well, it has something to do with my, it has something to do with me grieving the loss of my father. Well, partially it did. Um, only 10% of that the other thing is I felt a shift in my own body and I knew there was going to be a shift in the universe. I did not know what that shift was until let's say February when it started, um, when it started, the coronavirus actually started in China in January. And I didn't start feeling it until February. Um, I knew there was going to be a shift, but I didn't start feeling the shift until February. And then I, I said at the beginning of this shift, I said, no, I don't want to go um, skiing. And I, my stepmom, took my advice, didn't do anything then um took my advice so hard said fine you don't have to go skiing and then i started feeling the shift back in february started feeling it and so i started making a plan for myself back in february i knew i knew exactly what i was doing i knew exactly that i was going to fly out on February, on um, March 3rd, fly back, March 9th, be at home, March, um, be at home in the afternoon of March 9th. And I knew exactly because I started feeling a shift in the universe back in July and then started making a plan for myself back in Wow, we didn't decide until March to turn around and come back. I should have spoken to you. Because <laughs> well, we were lot, halfway across the country. People, a lot of people should have. A lot of people should have. Now, the thing that you got to realize with cancers is where we, the astrological sign cancer sees the writing on the walls, see feels it within our bodies feels these shifts within our bodies so now people are making plans but i knew 
the day exactly that I was going to fly out, the day exactly that I was going to come home. I knew that I was, by the time I got to Chicago International Airport, I knew that stuff was going on at my home base, which is Aspen, Colorado. And I knew that I was going to be sheltered in place since um, March 9th because I, due to my neurological disability, I am at high risk for what's going on. Wow. And I even made it to a list produced by the CDC, you guys. So I knew I was at high risk. Now, back in the February, when we didn't have shelter in place, I was making a plan for shelter in place. I was um, making a plan for shelter in place because I felt the shift um, in August that was happening. Wow. So, yes, and that's how a cancer works, and that's how a cancer sees things, and yep, so the only thing is that I am social distancing is hard because right now my stepmom can't give me a hug because um, she's practicing social distancing as um, much as she wants to give me a hug, she can't. And so um, that's hard. That's hard when you're living with people that you know love you and they want to give you a hug. And yeah, so that's hard. This social, um, this social distancing is the hardest thing on me ever. But we're going to get through this, you guys. We're going to make it strong on the other side. And right now, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and please just follow along this journey of a Dr. Kale's book and go support her on Amazon if you have the cash to go support support her on Amazon. Please do. And where can people find you, Dr. Carol? And, of course, where can people find the book? Well, because you said something about if they have the cash. Because of the timing, we put the Kindle up for 99 cents. So they can get the Kindle, read it to their child for 99 cents. So that's, you know, um, a, a gift in this horrible time. And the book is called The Surprise Circus, and it's by Dr. Carol and Aria Soloway. That's S-O-L-O-W-A-Y. And it's on Amazon. The hardcover is there, too, but they can get the Kindle in their hands today and read their child a bedtime story tonight. Oh, yes, you guys can. And I know that Amazon Prime is giving a free month to free time. Um, That's the kids' version. They're giving a whole bunch of kid-related shows, kid-related books, kid-related, you know, what. And then I know that Audible's giving a discount. I know that people are working with kids to the best of their abilities. I know, even though Zoom got hacked, I know that some school districts are using Zoom for their online platforms, and Zoom has taken the precautions not to get hacked again. And so Zoom is doing it. So please support these independent published authors like myself and like Dr. Gail, because I want you guys to be educated about cerebral palsy. My books also can be found on Amazon. My books also can be found on Audible as well. And then 
I also want the surprise circus to hit number one again because um, hitting number one during these times is crucial on Amazon just because we need hope, we need help, we need love. And who are we going to do it with next generation? So I hope you guys enjoyed another fabulous episode of Ask Win. And I will see you guys later, but I will be around. I'm accessible if you guys need me. And I just hope you are staying safe, happy, and healthy, you guys. Thanks to you guys. Bye, you guys. You just listened to Ask Win, the podcast. To become a guest in the show, visit our website at askwin.weebly.com or call 816-591-3399. Just look for Danielle. Connect with Win on Twitter at Win Kelly Charles and like our Facebook page at Butterflies of Wisdom. You can also purchase Win's book through Amazon.com or get a copy of the audiobook through Audible. Ask Win, the podcast.